Cookie cutter portfolios here. Fisher Investments tailors portfolios to meet each client's goals and needs. But you do sell investments that earn you high commissions, right? And make commissions when you make trades for your clients? No, Fisher Investments doesn't sell any commission investment products, and we never earn commissions on trades. So what's in it for you? Fisher Investments fees are structured so we do better when our clients do better. When it comes to helping clients achieve a comfortable retirement, we're clearly different. Visit FisherInvestments.com to find out why investors like you switch to us. Fisher Investments, clearly different money management. Investments in securities involve the risk of loss. It is 8.07. Let's get a check on the roads in the Team Hochberg Traffic Center with Jim. The northbound Tri-State Tollway has heavy delays between the Reagan Tollway and before Irving Park. An earlier crash is now gone. Inbound Kennedy traffic is knotted up from Harlem to Montrose with the left lane blocked for the ongoing overpass demolition. It's 31 minutes O'Hare to downtown, outbound 20. On Eisenhower, traffic's tight. Wolf to First Avenue, 34 minutes, 390 to downtown. Outbound 34 after a crash at 9th Avenue. Inbound Stevenson, it's now 40 minutes, 355 to the drive. Inbound Ryan at the Stevenson, got a crash to the two left lanes, 24 minutes, 95th to downtown. Bishop Ford, you've got about a four-minute delay approaching the merge. And that's traffic on this Monday. I'm Jim Telemonte on AM 560, The Answer. Jim, thank you. Chicago's Morning Answer continues next in our one-hour heating and air conditioning weather center. Our meteorologist, Steve Williams. Mostly sunny, pleasant day. High today at 76. Clear to partly cloudy tonight, low 58. Tomorrow, sunny to partly cloudy with a high 86. And then sunshine, a warmer day on Wednesday, the high near 88. I'm Steve Williams on AM560, The Answer. 58 at O'Hare, next news, 830. Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan and Amy continues next on AM560, The Answer. Listen to AM560, The Answer, online at 560theanswer.com, on the AM560 mobile app, and your Alexa-powered smart speaker, on TuneIn, iHeart, and Radio.com. This is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson on AM560, The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan and Amy, and uh, what's going on in the uh, newly minted independent nation of Chaz in the center of Seattle? Uh, you recall uh, some are taking the uh, occupation of that uh, six-block area in the heart of Seattle more seriously than others. The person seeming to take it the least seriously is the mayor of Seattle, and incredibly, Jenny Durkin is a former U.S. attorney. Um, We've got four blocks in Seattle that you just saw pictures of that is more like a block party atmosphere. It's not an armed takeover. It's not a military junta. Um, We will we will make sure that we can restore this. But we have block parties and and the like in this part of Seattle all the time. It's it's known for that. In, In her interview with Chris Cuomo, that answer was so confounding that it didn't get past Chris Cuomo. That's how bad that answer was. He said, well, normally in block parties, you don't concede a police precinct to the block partiers. Uh, So how long is this going to go on? How long do you think Seattle in those few blocks looks like this? I don't know. We could have the summer of love. Well, tell that to the police who was supposed to be in that precinct, though. But I understand your sentiment, Mayor. You do? That makes one of us. Block, I mean, block party. Block Wait, where's party. the where's the the dunk tank and the bouncy house and the water slide uh, and the hot dog stand and the cotton candy? Some of those uh, who are part of the occupation don't appreciate that characterization either. Yeah, this is on MSNBC uh, reporter Vaughn Hilliard. I've never heard of him before, but he was you know he's been embedded with these guys, and well, they quickly turned on him when they didn't like what he said. Uh, you know, this is a part of the conversation, Joshua, that we heard here in these streets is the extent to which it has been peaceful since Monday. After more than a week of clashes between the demonstrators and the police, now you've seen essentially almost like a street festival type atmosphere. A street festival type atmosphere. Correct. atmosphere no, with a very it is not a street festival. With a very intentional purpose. It is not a street festival. With it is not a street festival. Do not say that. Please. Shame on you for saying that. Learn right now. It is not a street festival. Do you know our voices sound like it is not. Gas that police attacked us with? 
you have to understand some traumatizing things happened here. All of us are suffering from PTSD in our own country, from our own country. That's what a lot. It's not a street fight. Vaughn, it's okay. Let her finish. Let her finish. Let her finish. One thing to listen to. It's not a street festival. Vaughn, ask him if I can ask. Would you ask him if I can put a question? So they're saying it's not a street festival. This is a social movement. That's how they want it labeled. Sure, of course. And uh, if you don't agree with them, they'll... Uh, kick you out. Well, literally kick you, perhaps. Uh, Carmen Best, she's allegedly uh, police chief, and she's the police chief of Seattle. She uh, had this to say on um, Face the Nation, or on uh, State of the Union, I think, with Tapper over the weekend. But what I, what I believe, especially after I was at a march yesterday, or the day before yesterday, with Black Lives Matter, and I was looking at the, uh, the 60,000 people that were there, um, signs saying, you know, defund the police, uh, stop police brutality, uh, you know, no qualified immunity. And there were thousands of people carrying those particular signs. And I just realized it was a, a moment, a, an epiphany, that this is a pivotal moment in history. We are going to move in a different direction, and policing will never be the same as it was before. Policing will never be the wow. same as it was before. I mean, that may be in some good ways. It may be in a lot of bad ways as well. And by the way, just in case uh, there was any confusion, uh, you know, it's a street festival. No, we don't consider it a street festival. So the the the, the, the uh, activists are a little bit offended by the propaganda of their allies in the media. It's very interesting. And for those saying it's not really abolish the police, it's reimagining the police and so forth. Uh, uh, Mariami Kaba, who is an activist uh, and the director of Project NIA, a grassroots group that works to end youth incarceration, writing in the New York Times over the weekend, Yes, we mean literally abolish the police. We can't simply change our job descriptions to focus on the worst of the worst criminals. That's not what they're set up to do. I've been advocating for the abolition of the police for years. Cut the number of police in half, cut their budget in half. That's a start. But yes, when we say abolish the police, what we're working towards is literally abolishing the police. And um, in the... Um, uh, their their uh, their eschatological uh, Manichaean way. Uh, we we want a country that is built on cooperation instead of individualism, on mutual aid instead of self preservation. What would the country look like if it had billions of extra dollars to spend on housing, food, and education for all? That's the that's the vision. For more on this, we're pleased to be joined by our friend Michael Medved, host of the Michael Medved Show, member of USA Today's Board of Contributors and author of God's Hand on America, Divine Providence in the Modern Era. Michael, always a pleasure. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. No, thank you. And uh, I can tell you I'm uh, at about 12 miles away right now from the what used to be known as the Capitol Hill uh, Autonomous Zone, where they apparently changed the name yesterday uh, to uh, the Capitol Hill Occupied Protest. Correct. Oh, yes, no, it's it's shit. it's a uh, choppa. Chop. Yeah, choppa. Yeah, except there's so there's Chessa struggle choppa? about there's struggle about that. I mean, as there isn't any revolutionary regime. <laughs> uh, yes. There's struggle about whether it stands for Capitol Hill Occupied Protest or Capitol Hill Organized Protest. Uh, but the Chaz name. There was an effort yesterday to take down the Chaz sign about Welcome to the Capitol Hill Occupied. Uh, autonomous zone, and there was a struggle over that. And well, I'll, nobody uh, called the cops. Well, I'll tell you, Ouch. yeah, I'll tell you what. Um, that's actually encouraging. They're starting to focus on marginal issues, just like Congress does. So ma well, maybe, wait, wait, maybe there's hope for them yet. On marginal issues from the beginning. <laughs> it's, look, the the terrible, terrible thing about this, and and this goes for Chicago as well. It goes for Seattle. It goes for the whole country. Is we've had very, very few. Uh, unequivocal successes in terms of government policy in the United States over the last 50 years. I, let's face it. One unequivocal success in governmental policy was what people call broken windows policing, which is based on the studies of James Q. Wilson, who was a professor at UCLA and later at Harvard, who said, look, it's really, really important to get police to enforce things like laws against sleeping on the street to get police to enforce things against a graffiti and against broken windows and against trash. Because when that happens to a neighborhood, it sends a message to bad guys, and there are bad guys out there, 
that there's no authority here, that all order has broken down, that this is the equivalent of the Wild West and you can do anything you want. And so, of course, as Carmen Best, our police chief in Seattle, said, uh, as a result, a rape and murder and assault, it all goes up. And who are you going to call? Uh, you're going to call a social worker now, according to this dream. And what, what is very scary to me is I know a lot of cops out here, and the demoralization is terrible. And I think the same thing is true in Chicago, oh, from yes. what I understand. Oh, it's bad. And, and across the country. And when you have cops who are discouraged and demoralized and people leaving the force and people feeling rightly totally unappreciated for the effort and the sacrifice they make every single day, this is a dangerous situation. I mean, look at Minneapolis. Seven police officers resigned. Seven more are in the process of letting go because they say no one has their back and it's such a dangerous job. But for those of us who don't live in Seattle, tell us about that six-block area that Chaz, now Chapa, has occupied. Okay, you know, this is what really, again, the, the media are terrible, just terrible, all of them, uh, because nobody brings out the fact what Capitol Hill is known for. When you say Capitol Hill out here, mm -hmm. it's a gay neighborhood, okay? It is, it, there are very, very few minority uh, residents in Capitol Hill. It is an upscale gay neighborhood uh, that, that is known for that. It's the center every year when they have a pride parade. And, of course, this year it's all been suspended because of the panda pandemic. But it's uh, considered the center of one of America's most gay-friendly cities. And I, it, what's un unclear to me is what happened to the organized gay residents and activists who have called Capitol Hill their base of operations. And by the way, it's a fascinating story, a very typical Seattle story. It's called Capitol Hill. The state capitol was never here. It was never until now the capital of anything. And the Capitol Hill was sort of used ironically because at one point before statehood, uh, there was a real estate developer who, who bought the land in the area and designated a Capitol Hill, helping them move the state capital to Seattle. They never did. It was in Olympia. So that's something else people don't know. Well, uh, it, I, again, I just am trying to be optimistic for uh, Raz Simone and the, uh, the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone slash CHOPA founders, founding fathers and, and, and uh, mothers. Uh, so they they uh, they erected a border wall, and so maybe Trump will support border wall funding for for Chaz, <laughs> and uh, and also they uh, believe in the need to have weapons in order to uh, provide order within the corporate brownies of Chaz. So those are encouraging signs to uh, to an, a fledgling nation. Yeah, well, the the thing is, it's not so well enforced. Uh, I, we have a, a a dear friend who is a. Um, who has a, a license to carry, and he's actually an, uh, an NRA uh, uh, instructor. instructor. Yeah. yeah. And he's also a former Marine officer, and he's also a professional opera singer, okay? So it's wow. a whole, <laughs> nice all range. kinds of qualifications. Yeah. He, went, he went up there to see for himself, and he said, again, media distortions are insane. And, and by the way, including Fox News, I hate to say it. But um, the, the truth of the matter is he, he found it not difficult at all to, to go just walk right in. There are no borders in the uh, Chop or Chaz or the Capitol Hill area at all. And what there is is a great a congregation of homeless people, a great congregation of camps and uh, on sidewalks, uh, boarded up businesses, graffiti everywhere, trash everywhere, because, of course, nobody's going to go up there under the current circumstance and try to clean things up. And what's really terrible is that, like there's a new Whole Foods up there, right? And there are all kinds of businesses and some of the top-rated restaurants in the city. And, and just as things were reopening and we were getting back to normal, um, well, what, it, what passes for normal in Seattle – uh, there's, there's this, and it's, it's a, a, a terrible, terrible thing because we've had a huge building boom downtown. We've had huge gentrification. There are people living in Chaz who, who have been paying when people paid rent once upon a time, who've been paying for apartments at 
three, four thousand dollars a month. Mm. And and now again with the pandemic and with the general chaos in the city and no enforcement of absolutely anything, some of the landlords <laughs> will have to pay their bills for having built new buildings, for instance, that they're gonna to rent to people. The the economic impact on the entire region and the entire country is going to be devastating. It's not really well, the summer of love. No. And by the way, I'm old enough to remember the real summer of love, oh, which was a disaster. And a lot of people dying of drug overdoses and blitzing their minds out and their their cognitive abilities out with LSD, it wasn't so great. Well, maybe well, Jenny Durkin has a different recollection. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> well, but, See, uh, if she has any recollection. What is your governor going to do? He seems very tone deaf right now. What, and how is this going to end? And how long are they going to let this village of Chaz continue? Uh I, I think they're negotiating now, frankly, and I think they're going to have an official end to it. It's not, again, it. what has changed here right now is just basically the pulling back from all policing. And by the way, Carmen Best, who's a black and female and has done a, under very, very difficult circumstances a pretty good job, she doesn't know and is trying to find out how the order came down for them to evacuate that police station. She she says she never did it. Hmm. She didn't want them to leave. And what they're going to have to do is to reestablish something about what happens with that building. And once they do, right now the, what the demonstrators, what the people at Chaz or CHOP uh, seem to want is an agreement to a 50% cut in policing. And this comes at a time... For, for five years, the people of Seattle have been demanding more cops on the street because there's been a real deterioration of, of life in the city, largely related to the, this homeless disaster where we're second or third worst. We're right behind L.A. and San Francisco. And, uh, and of, of course, even with increases in the police budget, which is now $400 million bucks, they haven't been able to put more officers on the street. So, well, uh, well, and and just with respect to that police precinct and and I mean, the fact that uh, the police chief and the mayor are not on the same page with respect to that police precinct is remarkable. And I I mean, that is a Neville Chamberlain quality uh, instance of appeasement by the civilian political authorities in that city. It's incredible. So whatever's happening in Chaz is almost secondary to the idea that you would have police evacuate a precinct that they could otherwise defend. Because of PR reasons, it seems uh, the, the the press, you know, suggesting the police response to people throwing rocks and and everything else at police uh, was the police were overreacting, and so this is why they ultimately uh, this is one of the storylines at least we've heard ultimately why the political decision was made to ab- abdicate the precinct, even though they could have held the precinct. I mean, but that is just an unbelievable surrender to the mob. No, there's no question about it, and. Look, the the real problem here is, well, the, the existing political structure. There isn't a single even moderate voice on the Seattle City Council. Uh, things range between the socialist Shama Swant, who everybody else does seem to hate, who, who literally who wants to have uh, the people take over Boeing. Uh, right. and, and yes. Because they, right. they can make the airplanes better than Boeing can make. Well, well maybe now. I don't, I, look, it's, it's, it's crazy. And her big thing is what should happen is the police should be defunded, and uh, then they should tax Amazon at 50 percent, right, which is our biggest employer in the city of Seattle. And then with that nirvana, they will provide everybody with a house that the city will pay for. Simple as that. It's very yeah, easy. It's, it's a brilliant government. No, it's completely insane. And the difficulty is we're in an election year. The governor is up for re-election. He's going to win in a huge landslide because of the insane state of the Republican Party where, where there are six candidates for governor against him and we have a jungle primary. There may not even be a Republican who clears the primary. Oh, boy. I mean, it's, it's just disaster. Uh, what are the chances you think that maybe NBC could get uh, Kelsey Grammer and David Hyde Pierce back together and they could do <laughs> Frasier, but they, they, he hosts the show in Chaz, like on ham radio? 
Right. I, I think that's a, that's a terrific idea. Uh, by the way, Fraser was never filmed in Seattle. They did a few establishing shots. Right. They clearly didn't know anything about it. They certainly didn't know anything about the world of, of radio in Seattle. The, the, the ironic thing is that in the city of Seattle, what, they had a peaceful protest on, I think it was the, uh, Friday. They had 62,000 people, and they really did, marching. And that's a pretty wow. big demonstration. And, and again, what they're negotiating about is very, very major cuts in the police budget, which, of course, is a disaster, could end up leading to a police strike, God forbid. Uh, and uh, the, the idea that right now the mayor is talking seriously about this, and, and really the governor has <laughs> tried to keep hands off, because in his opposition in election year, what the other candidates are running against, they're running against Seattle. And believe it or not, the majority of population in this state does not live in the city of Seattle. A- any chance you'll relocate to Chaz and run against Raz Simone for a <laughs> warlord of Chaz? <laughs> no? No, I think Raz has better rap. Uh, <laughs> yeah, though, though everybody here tries to rap. And what's, what's crazy about this also <laughs> is all of this is in the name of, of Black Lives Matter, the the black population of Seattle has been decreasing with gentrification, mm. and uh, and and it, it was never large to begin with. Uh, black black population is lower than ten percent in the city of Seattle, and uh, it, though those communities, what remains of those communities, would be devastated by the withdrawal of police protection. For all good people and people who who want to build businesses and build lives and open up schools again, and, and again, I uh, Dan and Amy, I can't help but think that this entire insanity, and it's probably true in Chicago, is related to people's pent up energy and everything due to the lockdown. Yep, mm. I agree 100. percent I said that from the get go. He is Michael Medved, host of the Michael Medved Show, member of USA Today's board of contributors, author of God's Hand on America: Divine Providence in the Modern Era. Michael, always a treat. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you. Let's hope we have a great week uh, across the country. Absolutely. Including Chaz. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Michael Medved, who joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. It's news, opinion, insight. This is Chicago's Morning Answer on AM560. The Answer. Diabetes, high blood pressure, anxiety meds, everyone's on them. If you're a 50-year-old male, maybe a bit porky, and you may even have type 2 diabetes, a million dollars of term insurance may only cost you about 200 bucks a month. Call Term Provider. Speak with Big Lou at 800-555-2085. Big Lou will find a term life policy for you even if you have type 2 diabetes, are overweight, or have high blood pressure. Term Provider has helped thousands of people like you who think 